most of you are making this mistake while buying your TV or a projector display. For instance, those buying TV, they only look at the technology which is LED, OLED or QLED and they look at the screen inches diagonal. But you know what, that's not just about TV. Similarly to those who are buying projectors, they look for the light source, whether it's a laser projector, a LED projector or a lamp based projector or they look at 4K versus Full HD. But you know what, to get an amazing movie experience on the screen, you need to know something better than this basic stuff. And that is where the terminologies like HDR, HDR10, HDR10 Plus and Dolby Vision are going to haunt you. And I am going to exactly clear that for you today. Now, before we get into the technical differences of each of this format, let us understand that what are the main important factors that really matter when it comes to a video quality. The first one is the colors. Now, colors in any visual display means that how many different colors can your video device really produce. Now, higher number of colors will always make the image much more clear and better to experience. The second one is brightness. Now, brightness for a TV display is measured in nits. Similarly, for projectors, I know you would say that it's lumens, but that's wrong. Lumens is the light source output. What you see on the screen is the reflection of that light and that is still calculated in nits. Now, higher number of nits means higher the brightness and higher the brightness means that you will be able to see the small, small details very, very clearly. And the last important factor is the contrast ratio. Now, contrast ratio is the ratio between the brightest of the white and the darkest of the black on that screen. So, these are the three main factors that are really going to determine how good your video quality is. Now, let's start with HDR. HDR, as the name suggests, stands for high dynamic range. Compared to the old standard dynamic range, high dynamic range was introduced so that we can start seeing a more brighter and a more colorful picture on the screen. So, that's where the 8 bit rate of this HDR came into play. Most of the colors that your eyes can see today are actually made out of three primary colors, the red and green and blue. Now, these three colors combine together to create variety of shades. Now, when you look at the HDR display, it actually tries and achieves 16 million colors on the screen. Now, 16 million colors seems to be very, very high and that is why the old HDR started fading away and HDR became the new format of enjoying a great visual experience on the screen. A standard HDR format supports up to 1000 nits, but most standard HDR content is mastered around 400 to maximum 600 nits display. Now over here, one thing is very, very sure that there is no difference in the metadata that is sent to the display. It is simply a better version of HDR. And content availability, you will always find most of the content on your TVs to be in the HDR format. But you know what, once you start having a better visual experience, the demand is always for how can I still make it better. And that is where the second format of HDR10 came into existence. Now HDR10, as the name suggests, is a 10 bitrate color. Now in this, what you do is you raise the 2 is to power of 10 for R, G and B, that is red, green and blue. And what you see on the screen is 1 billion colors. Now the jump from an HDR to HDR10 is that's why extremely significant because over 16 million colors that you got from your HDR display, the HDR10 can now give you 1 billion colors. Similarly, the brightness that is used for HDR10 is now supporting up to 10,000 nits. Now obviously most of the content is going to be around 1,000 to 4,000 nits only. But the best part about the HDR10 is that it started using static metadata which means that it applies one set of brightness, contrast and color information for the entire movie. And you will see most of the HDR10 content being available on all the OTT platforms as well as the major 4K and Ultra HD Blu-ray discs. But the world always wanted something more. And that is where the need of having a dynamic metadata exchange, which helps you have different settings for each frame in a content came into existence and HDR10 Plus was born. Now in HDR10+, Plus, the bitrate of the color depth is same which is 10 bit, which means that the color light output or the colors that you will see on the screen will still be 1 billion colors. However, now in the HDR10+, Plus format, the settings that are done for the brightness, contrast and color light output 
will change for each and every frame of a content. And that is why HDR10 Plus became much more superior in the viewing experience compared to a standard HDR10 format. But here comes the big disruptor in the market who tells everyone that you know what, 8 bit and 10 bit is just so outdated. Why don't we look at a 12 bit rate color depth? Because it can actually start giving you 68 billion colors on the screen. And that is provided by none other than Dolby Vision. And Dolby Vision, that's why I started gaining popularity because the image that you could see with the Dolby Vision content on your screen was far more superior than a standard HDR10 or even HDR10+. The metadata exchange is again going to be dynamic for Dolby Vision where each of the frame has got a different setting. Most of the LG TVs will also read a term called Dolby Vision IQ. Now IQ is where they started putting small small sensors in the laser displays or the LED displays of the TV and it started analyzing the room ambient light. And by this analyzing, they started changing their settings further. So that is where Dolby Vision IQ and Dolby Vision started becoming a more revolutionary technology for video display because they could give high number of colors on the screen. The brightness was also superior. And lastly, the content was much more better to enjoy on a Dolby Vision screen. Now, I know most of you, what you're going to do is the next time you go out there to buy TV or a projector, you are just going to read whether it supports Dolby Vision and just go for it, right? Because we all learned that's the best way to enjoy a great viewing experience. But you know what? That's not how the world of content works. Because eventually that's not in our control. What content creators make is something that eventually you and I have to see on our displays. And that's where the OTT platforms are one of the major content contributors today. The first one, Amazon Prime, for instance, does not work with Dolby Vision. They have got all of their content available in HDR and HDR 10 plus formats. Similarly, if you look at Netflix, it has got much of its content available in Dolby Vision, especially the series, web series, movie shows, everything that is coming out is coming in Dolby Vision standards. And some of it is still in HDR format. When it comes to Geo Hotstar in India, their content is now coming more in Dolby Vision standards. Especially the Marvel series is all in Dolby Vision. Whereas some other content are still available only in HDR formats. And lastly, the Apple TV Plus app has got most of their content available in Dolby Vision. Now let's get back to where we started. The mistakes that we make while buying TV or projector. Now you'll see most of the Samsung TVs do not have Dolby Vision mentioned on it. Because Dolby requires a paid license by the manufacturer and Samsung prefers to use open platforms like HDR and HDR10+. Plus. So that's why most of the Samsung TVs will have HDR, HDR10 and HDR10 plus settings, but will never have a Dolby Vision standard support. Similarly, some of the LGs and the Sonys will work more on Dolby Vision, but they will not work on the HDR10 plus formats. When it comes to projector, that's a different ballgame altogether, because you will very rarely see a projector manufacturer coming up with a Dolby Vision license. Some of the ultra short throw projectors which have got it are the 4Movie Theatre Premium or the 4Movie Theatre Projector. Then you have some of the JM Go long throw projectors or portable projector model and XGME. Now these are some projectors which are in the portable and the ultra short throw segment. But when it comes to a dedicated home theatre projector, you will not see many projectors coming up with HDR10 Plus or Dolby Vision support. So the next time you are buying TV or a projector, always check what kind of content you consume and what are the formats available in this content and your display. Because that is the way you will be able to make a wise decision to understand the best display that suits your requirement and gives you the best picture quality. That's it from my end. I, Tanmay Mehta, your home theater consultant or home theater wale bhaiya. We'll see you again in my next video. Thank you so much for watching.